let's get started. I call the meeting to order at 621. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Just one question, is the air conditioner really loud on the audio? Uh, we get a hand for I shut mine off. Yeah. Well, we just the last gasp of the breeze. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, announcements. The um, the uh, South Pond is uh, South Pond Beach is closed through 7:22 through for weed treatment, and additionally, beyond that, it will be closed due to high E. coli levels until further notice. Uh, the cable access channel is now up and running on channels 192 and 194. Uh, currently, sc scrolling bulletin board announcements, um, additional programming such as recordings of this meeting for those who need help falling asleep uh, will be forthcoming. Uh, let's see, uh, Highway Foreman Don Hebert has announced he will retire the week of September 11th. <clears throat> Mr. Hebert has worked for the town for the past 34 years since May 1st, 1989. We are grateful for Mr. Hebert's dedicated service to the town and we wish him well in his retirement. I hope he enjoys it. And uh, related to that, the Highway Department is currently seeking a full-time operator laborer. The, uh, this is a fully benefited position and full-time. Uh, for more information, please visit brookfieldma.us. Uh, uh, those interested should submit a cover letter and resume to the Highway Department at highway at brookfieldma.us or mail to the Highway Department, attention Lindsay Rockwood, 56 Mill Street, Brookfield, Mass. Now we have signed warrants. Uh, okay, I can read them off for you if you want. Thank uh, you. FY 23 through 27, eight uh, accounts payable, 771, 74052. We've got FY 23-27, payroll, one, one, 115,737, 59. We've got FY 24-1, accounts payable, which is 777, 166, and 33 cents. We've got the 24-1 payroll, of um, $48,272.53 and FY24-1 withholding $26,966.45. Why is there no withholding? Yeah, I was wondering why there's no withholding. Yeah, I was about to ask that question. It, it was there, it was signed, it, but we can report on it next. We'll report on it next meeting. meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you can't, but it's a waste of time. Okay. All right. Do we usually um, approve it, or do we just, no, we just, we, we we just need to read it? We're just reporting this, okay. that the fact that they were signed. All right. Um, on to the agenda. The uh, and uh, let's see. This will actually just take a quick moment. So, um, ratify the uh, transfer request signature from seven eleven twenty three three hundred twenty seven dollars to the telephone account. Um, we I signed this um, because we were up against the end of the. Uh, Rather than scrambling to call the select board together, given the size of the transfer, I, I practically signed it. Uh, so I'll take a uh, motion to ratify that. In the, uh, I'll make a motion that we ratify the um, transfer uh, signed on, uh, let's see here, by the Board of Selectmen representative in the form of the chair on 7-11-2023. All right, I will second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. And now we have the poll hearing, which I believe our national group representative is here for. All right, uh, come on up so the audio can pick you up. I believe you need to open the hearing. Oh, you know, I guess I do. All right, um, I, uh, let's see. I, I can do that in line with select board meeting? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you can, I, well, you can suspend the select board meeting and open it and open the poll hearing. Yeah, I'll just open the, the poll hearing. Um, okay, I declare the poll hearing schedule for 720 open at 6.26 p.m. Great. So, good evening everyone. My name is Zishu. I'm representing McNash over here. 
Uh, I work as a distribution designer. So this job uh, is from a colleague of mine. The address is 59 Rice Corner Road in Brookfield. Um, essentially, we need a pole in front of this uh, owner's front lawn, essentially, because uh, he needs to get power to his, to his property. And the only way to do that is to install a pole. Um, the other adjacent poles are really far, far apart. Uh, there's a lot of trees and shrubs in between. Um, I don't think it makes sense to have to cut down that much to um, install some overhead lines. And uh, underground would make it pretty hard as well. So overhead is their only option. Um, so I think this is the best way that they'll, they'll get power to their property. Um, that's essentially it. Do I have any questions? OK. Uh, let's see. Are you here for the poll hearing? No, as ACL. OK, that's fine. All right. Um, I don't have any questions, Beth. Oh, it looks like we don't have any abutters that have any objections, so I'm good. All right. So can I uh, make a motion that we uh, accept the, uh, do we have to do a motion on this or no? For the full Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so we, so we need a motion to uh, authorize the placement per the uh, submitted design. We had a question, Mr. Chairman. Um, Let's second it for discussion. Yeah, I will second it for discussion. Um, uh, yes, Mr. Holcraft. I mean, it's a public hearing, so I don't see why not. Why not ask? Uh, how far back is that telephone pole from the end of the road? Grace Cone is kind of a screwy road. Right. Understood. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be within our right of way. So. Um, What's that mean? Uh, essentially, we're we're able to to put our poles. Um, on the edge of the road before someone else's property, but not on the asphalt, if that makes sense. So typically poles are maybe 10 to 13 feet off the side of the road. Um, and that's just for us to access for the most part. So it's gonna be 10 feet off? Yes, it's gonna be uh, essentially in line with the, with the adjacent pole, so. Oh, okay, good, that's good. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank all right, you. All right. Uh, given, that there, there, given that there appear to be no more questions, um, uh, all in favor of approving the uh, poll placement by National Grid, say aye. 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 All right, and I now declare the poll hearing closed at 628. Thank you, sir. Thank Have you, everyone. Thank you. And then, oh wait, oh, I have to sign three copies. Uh, there, I get, th I get three thing. I got three signed here's in here. Yep, that's true. All right, and th there's one. Th do I sign under city town clerk? No, you're not no, the city or town clerk. Signers, signatures. Have to sign. You have oh. to sign. I think it's on the other side of the page. Um, um, I just see it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just not seeing a blank that oh, says. Yeah. Okay. So, so actually, they, they it, what it looks like here is. Oh, this um, is from the, the town clerk? The, I think the city town clerk will sign above us, and we're supposed to sign below. So okay. I would just pick a line that's like halfway through those lines. They're, they're going to certify that our signatures are our signatures. Okay. Is what Mike needs to do, if I remember correctly. It's just, I want to get the paperwork right the first time so it doesn't have to come back to us. This gives him room to do whatever he wants to do. Mm -hmm. All right, so transfer request, pool hearing. All right, the dangerous animal policy. Okay, we've had a request for a dangerous dog hearing. Mm -hmm. The statute is completely silent on how to hold a hearing and what the requirements for noticing anybody in regard to the hearing is or are. So what I'm proposing is that you adopt a procedure and a policy on how these are supposed to be handled. So, um, and I think what you have in front of you is, well, first you have my proposal. Mm -hmm. um, that would be made into a, a policy, and then the procedure which is behind it, and then also adopt a means and a time frame for notice. So because there is no specific language about notice, posting a 48 hours is meets the, the requirement for the mm -hmm. law because you hold it during a selectman's meeting. You can have it independently of a selectman's meeting. You can hold a special um, for it. 
you should have a hearing officer. Um, I would recommend that the entire board be that hearing officer because you're impartial and mm -hmm. not involved in the actual emotions of, of and, and then with our previous past, practice. Yeah, your past practice. I, I think we've only yeah. had like one nuisance animal hearing in like 10 years and we use the full select board as the hearing officers. Okay. Um, we do have a packet where uh, Sarah was the hearing officer, or she sent the letter out with yes. it saying she was the hearing officer. So I need you to adopt um, for part of the policy that the board will be the hearing officer. Mm -hmm. um, we need to establish a timeline to hold the hearing, so if you get the complaint, you don't want it to be too long. situation or, or whatever the, the um, purpose for the dangerous dog hearing is. So I would ask that you adopt a relatively short time frame so if you get the complaint you will hold the meeting within the next two weeks. That will give you a window to be able to get around your own schedule. Mm -hmm. Notice to be provided to the dog owner uh, in hand by a police officer or a constable or USPS mail, certified return receipt. You need to pick one of those. Mm -hmm. um, let me rephrase that. I recommend you pick one of those. You don't need to do any of this. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then are you going to notify the abutters? Are you going to have any special type? Are you going to post this on the web on the website? Advertise it in a paper. Um, so those are those are things that you need to discuss and decide mm -hmm. for your for your policy. And since we do have a request for dangerous dog hearing, it really should be done this evening. Yes. Okay. Um, I, I'm I'm in agreement that the uh, select board. Uh, I, I, I concur with your recommendation that the select board should be the hearing officer. I think that allows the uh, animal control officer more latitude to um, initiate proceedings without then being the, uh, the prosecutor and the judge effectively. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. I only want to be one bad guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and it's similar, similar to like the zoning enforcement officer, right? Yeah. So. Um, uh, and Kelly, one question is the. Um, if the complaint is made to the animal control officer, um, should the timeline kick in when the when the animal control officer notifies the select board? It's like because if we're not if it goes so part of your we, policy can be that a formal complaint is a, is deemed accepted or received when X gets the complaint. So if it's the animal control officer or if it's the select board, then you pick pick who you want it to be. Mm -hmm. Okay. And your time frame will start ticking as soon as you get it. If that's yeah. the way you want to set this up, like I said, there is no rule. There are no hard and fast rules for yeah. this. And to a certain extent, if we find it's not working, it's like we can the we can decide to it's a, it. yeah we, we can update it and say it yeah. to make it work better. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to think that if it's a um, if if what is the official trigger of this? Is, is it someone saying, I want a dangerous animal hearing? Absolutely anyone under the statute can request a dangerous dog hearing. Yeah, that, right. Or a nu nuisance dog hearing, either. Mm -hmm. So I could see a dog on the street and request a dangerous dog hearing for that dog. Okay. I don't have to be a resident. Mm -hmm. I don't have to have an interaction with the dog. Yeah, it's just, I want to make So the statute yeah. is like super open and broad. Yeah, I, I just want to, I just want to make sure we, that what we do has a clear trigger so that we know whether the uh, the complaint is triggering our dangerous animal hearing or so if what it does is it actually triggers an investigation okay so I believe you have the statute in the packet you Can you put that? Put the bylaw I, I think this oh, is you that, put the bylaw this is, in okay oh, this is bylaw okay. yeah If that's for nuisance dogs, that's not for dangerous dogs. Let me see mm -hmm. if I can find the statute. I was gonna say Google's our friend. It is. <laughs> Where's yeah? And so is nope. One note. Yeah, she's got the keyboard. My money's on her. <laughs> she does. 
because then, the, then the, effectively the uh, so the, the policy is going to have to uh, account or the timeline is going to have to account for an investigation, which I think would normally be delegated to the ACO. So I think there's I think there's actually two things that we probably want is we probably want a timeline in terms of maximum, and I think we also need a timeline in terms of minimum. Yeah, so I think I so because I, I, in my head, and in, 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 I'm sorry, Claire, there. I was just going to say there are. I actually have 48 separate laws for for dogs. Right. Um, so give me. I, right. But but my thought is, and this is just like kind of like I'm just bouncing stuff mm -hmm. around here. So, and I'd love to hear what you're thinking too. But my thought is, two weeks from the time that the notice gets to you, not less than three days after that notice to allow time to gather information. Right. Absolutely, especially on the discrepancy between dangerous dog and nuisance dog. Because right. a nuisance dog, it's not as important that we get it done and handled as quickly a dangerous dog can cause damage to an animal. Right. And we don't want anyone to get hurt. So it, it may be one of those things, and is three days enough to determine whether it's it's nuisance or dangerous? I, I can always make a call. I usually do it within an like, hour. Like an hour, right. So because my thought would be the, the two-week time starts at point of notification of you. You have three days to determine the categorization of, of what the problem is. Mm -hmm. And then for nuisance dogs, do we do hearings for those as well? Yes. We, oh, yeah. okay. um, but it ha the complaint has to be in writing to okay. the hearing authority according to the statute, which I just found says any person may file a complaint in writing to the hearing authority that a dog owned or kept is a nuisance or a dangerous dog. And I usually refer, if I don't have a lot of back, evidence back enough, like call after call or bite or anything, I usually tell people that they can just do it themselves unless they can, there's something, because you can, like she said, you can just go down the street and say, I really like that dog. Right. Yeah. Know. So you would be the hearing authority. Right. So they'd have if to submit in writing to us. Correct. If, if it went in writing to the uh, animal control officer, could it be forwarded to us and count against, and count as a no written notification? Could we accept it that way? People won't usually email me and ask Okay. They're, they're, gonna, they're, they're, gonna, gonna, they're gonna, gonna call they're you, gonna they're gonna call. talk to you, and you're gonna say, okay. if, you, if you want something, send a letter to the select board, yeah. and that will start the process. That's, okay, that's, yeah, yeah. I, just, I just didn't want yeah. things coming to yeah. you and that, buggering up the process, but yep, no, but, it, but from what you say, it's uh, that's an unlikely path. I usually, like, I've only filed one because this dog, I don't want to get into it now, but it mm -hmm. made me feel strong yeah. enough to want to file myself and not wait for, you know, a neighbor to do it. Because yeah. usually mm -hmm. it's just barking. It's not usually dangerous dogs. It's usually nuisance dogs. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I, it, I feel like people, if they really want to follow through with it, they're willing to do send that email. And if mm -hmm. it's not, and they're just kind of in a petty war or something, then they just stop. I, I agree completely. I got an email last year from um, a resident who gave very few detail about the it's incident that she was complaining about, claimed there should have been a hear dangerous dog hearing, that there had been many complaints. This was right when you were shifting with Sarah. And I reached out and nobody had ever heard of the dog at that time in, in question. And I asked, would you like to file a dangerous dog hearing? Anyone can file under the statute. And I never heard another word. Yeah. So, you know, who knows where that went or what happened with that, but she's not wrong. People don't want to put it in writing if it's, if it's a neighbor dispute, right? right. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so the hearing authority shall investigate or cause the investigation of the complaint, including an examination under oath at a public hearing. So that is part of the investigation. Okay. So if, if they have to do it in writing, it has to go to the hearing authorities. That's set out in the law. So now mm -hmm. you just need to have, pick a time frame as to what you expect for Partial investigation, and you know, is the animal control officer going to um, investigate and have a resolution within X number of days that she'll bring back to you? And at that point, you'll schedule a hearing within so much time. So, yeah. and, and I think my thought would be 72 hours for the investigation for a dog determined to be a dangerous animal 
it would be within two business days of the investigation being submitted. Because then we can post it, like as soon as we can post it, basically. There's Are you getting all these numbers? Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, does that make sense? Just it does. It's it's a, it makes it's, good it's sense, a, and it's, it's a, a good It strikes me as a little aggressive. I, I'm just oh, I think, I think it's a good window. I think it's a good window. Because if it's a dangerous, she's yeah. saying she can typically turn the dangerous dog within like a few hours, but mm -hmm. we're giving her 72 hours. Okay, then, then with so the expectation And so it's really five gonna, working days yeah, that we're a, giving ourselves. If we're, getting a head, if we're getting a heads up of more time, then that's good. And we would say business days? Yeah. Because otherwise, if it's a Friday, we're, we right. don't want to be holding the hearing on Sunday. That's yeah, yeah. That's, what, that's why I said business days. Oh, I, I missed, all right, I missed the word. Yeah. I missed that. And it is kind of a sort of a notice to them. I mean, when I go knocking on their door, they know why, you know, why yeah. it's late, why yeah. I am, why I'm there. They know that something mm -hmm. could be coming we, if they're doing something and, wrong. And we could go three business days for the hearing by virtue of, since we only have two business days to post, and it's literally 48 hours because of the... The open meeting law. Maybe yeah, we need then to go three we, business days. My, my other concern is the availability of the uh, dog owning family. That's irrelevant. That's yeah, irrelevant. The, the it, public that may be part of the problem. It, 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 I, and I, I don't mean that the the care and custody of the dog is irrelevant. What I mean is that if they can't make it, you don't postpone this because your duty is to protect the the, the, the rest of the, the rest of us. Mm -hmm. So and if I'm involved, it's already not. Okay, it's, uh, it's just, it's, it's, it strikes me. It's, it's one of those, your rights to swing your arm's end at the end of my nose. This mm -hmm. is unfortunately kind of one of those things that falls in that category. Yeah. You're responsible for that animal and their, basically their decisions. And I literally said it today, they may make great decisions with you and on their own, left to their own decisions, they may make bad ones. And those bad ones can cost people limbs, fingers, mm -hmm. scars, you know, and I just hate yeah. to see that. So what have we got so far that we're, we've got uh, 72 hours from receipt from, from receipt to 48 hours and then bumps another one up to 72 hours. And that, that gives us five days if you're good. Yeah, yeah that's, it's still five days and it, it gives Five us days to hold a meeting is not enough time. You need a window, not a set date. If you can do it in five days, that's amazing. But okay. if you can't get a quorum, your five-day window is going to be yeah, shot. Right. That, that. Okay. That's what that I was thought. I was raising that concern. Yeah. Is, yeah. Okay. So, so you then. need a window. Um, no, no more than you know, no more than two weeks. You know what? What no we could do is say make every effort, every effort for a dog determined dangerous to hold it at the first availability, not to exceed. Two weeks from the original. Okay, deadline. but we don't we don't want to already determine the dog is dangerous until the hearing. So mm -hmm. so a dog um, reported or verified. I don't know. We got to find another way to put it though, because yeah. that that presupposes the outcome of the hearing. True. Yeah. Okay. So a dog reported dangerous um, upon ACO's initial review. Initial yeah ACO's yeah. initial yeah. review will be. Yeah, I would. Hold the hearing. I would say that we would at the ACO as part of their investigation. Would it make sense to have the ask the ACO determine that? Would do they, in their opinion, do they think this animal is a dangerous? Absolutely animal? not. That is done at the hearing. You you make no, no. that determination. You no, cannot I, ask for a predetermination by the animal control. But if the officer. animal control officer is doing an investigation, they can say this is what I think it is. It's not a legally binding decision. It absolutely is. If you, you're pre you're predetermining the decision, yeah, if you do that, you're you're, you're biasing your hearing. You can't bias your hearing. It will not hold up in court. Gotcha. Okay. And, and these things go to court. I'm just I'm just trying to think of a way for the animal control officer to after the investigative report is received, you we hold can a make hearing. a determin we we make a determination of how fast we need to this this doesn't this doesn't seem like something that needs to be handled right away. And again, you're presupposing, you're predetermining without any investigation under oath, which is the whole point behind the hearing. You cannot prejudge the situation, so set a time frame that you will stick to. No matter mm -hmm. Not wiggle it around. It'll be because of scheduling, not because of the report. Because you're already, you're prejudicing yourself before you hold the hearing and hearing all the evidence. Uh, do, do you understand what I'm saying? And yes. if, if this goes to court and there's evidence in writing that you have pre-prejudiced the outcome, 
the court will not likely hold up the finding, yeah. or they may find the finding suspect. So we okay. pick a time frame. Pick Once you have your report from the ACO, you will respond within X number of days. Mm -hmm. And depending on schedule, you know, availability, schedule so, the. So how about two days for the investigation, two days to determine the date of the hearing, not to exceed two weeks end to end. That's perfect because it doesn't presuppose any prejudice in the matter okay. whatsoever. Right. Yep. I, I can and that gives that. some and that gives some time to figure out, you know, who can get in when. Yeah. Right. And and as yeah. soon as we get the complaint, we can start looking at our calendars and. Yeah. Yes. Because we because once we get the complaint, we know we're having a hearing. hearing. Yes. The, the you're having a hearing. No yeah. It, once you get the complaint, you're having a hearing. Yeah. So it's like whether right, you get an investigative report or not. Yeah. And if for whatever reason. The ACO is on vacation, and the other person covering has broken their leg or is, is out horseback riding mm -hmm. and doesn't know that the ACO is on vacation. Whatever, I'm making these scenarios up, of course, but you know you got to hold that hearing no later than two weeks from getting that complaint. Mm -hmm. So, and, and then at the time of the hearing, you have the opportunity to review a, a forthcoming investigation. Yeah, and, and then the and, evidence can and be And everything comes under oath, which mm -hmm. you'll see from the proposed hearing Perfect. format that mm -hmm. I'm giving you. Yep. Okay. And, cool. and then in terms of notification. Um, Who do you want notified? Well, the, the owners of the animal obviously have to should be notified and I would say the immediate abutters and I'm wondering if we want to go bigger but how do we go bigger without going so, too so, many people? So so because here's the challenge right and I'll just give you an example mm -hmm. there was a period of time where somebody across the green from me had an insufficient fence for the dogs that they have and I know that one of their dogs did like $1,500 worth of bite damage to their neighbor's dog while the neighbor's dog was being walked past on a leash. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, but that person who was walking, it happened to be their next door neighbor, but it could have been somebody from the other side of the village that was mm -hmm. walking by with the dog that, that had the attack. Occur. Right. So, um, I think that's where the posting requirement relative to the town website and my town government becomes important. Yes. Um, and, and and I guess my question, yeah, and, and I think that's where the, the scheduling of the meeting also becomes a challenge though, because if we're going to be doing a public hearing and mailing notices, right, do we have the option if it's a, if, if we don't think certified mail would get to the abutters in time? It, abs it absolutely won't. Uh, Brookfield is a lovely little town, but the mail is sometimes well, well, sketchy. And the reason why I, where I was about to go is, is are we are we allowed to like use our constables to like do you a certified mail? You can at 20 delivery? bucks a pop. Okay, but we, we would have that, uh, we have that choice to make, right? You do, but if you're going to notify, say, all the immediate abutters and they're in a little tight neighborhood and they've got eight houses, you just spent 20 times eight. So you need to consider a cost as well. Right, but I, like I said, we've done this once in, in yeah. 10 years. Yeah, and, and so, the ACO does so, have a budget. And, right. and, and, and if they and overrun, we, we, we have a selectman's budget if we have to cover them. Yep, yep. So. I'm just, I get, and I get it. I'm yeah. not trying to discount the cost. I'm oh, just saying, I'm not trying to make it a big deal yeah. either. I just want you to have all the information to make your a choice. Absolutely. So I, I think what we say is that our preference is if if we think that, like, I think we could go, in most instances, we could do just delivery. Just, just first class delivery or? Just, just first class first class with delivery confirmation on it. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't know that it has to be certified. I think we can go with just delivery confirmation yeah. because we know it got to them, which is at least a yeah. little quicker than certified yeah. mail. For, for the abutters. And, and if, yeah, for the abutters. And in, but if in the opinion of the hearing 
entities that the notifications wouldn't get there in time that we have the option to let to, to use constable yes delivery. I would use a constable or a police officer which both are allowed under the statute okay. to serve the owner okay I, I agree so especially whatever's allowed time. under the oh, oh yeah yeah to serve the owner the abutters aren't required to be notified and, oh, and I don't know that the owner is required but you may serve the owner okay using either so okay. yeah so let's give ourselves the option to use which either one um you may want to send a police officer if you have a dangerous dog once because they may need oh, well our constables are right. armed yes yeah. so. we have armed constables so okay um so you want to do immediate abutters within a certain feet of the property because an immediate abutter to someone who lives on the farm might be you know two two miles away mm -hmm. whereas in a little tight neighborhood they you might want to do a radius Opinion. of so many feet I don't have a lot of, of the property of line farm dogs they have enough room to run their line well I know but what I'm, what I'm saying is if you do a certain amount of feet right could, could we do opposed. either or could we do at a minimum immediate abutters you know or 800 feet or something like well, that. Well, 800 feet is crazy, but okay. yeah. But, but, yeah. Or whatever. Well, but whatever. You, just, you just did the whole village district. Yeah, well, yeah, right? so, yeah. Well, do, then would we say, like, immediate abutters and anyone within, I'll say, 500 feet no, along feet. along the road, along a road. So. No. It would have to, yeah. You I don't, that doesn't work. Okay. That's, that's What's a reasonable distance? 200 feet? 200 I would feet? do. Yeah, I, so because some of the neighborhoods are like if it's in down in the lake area where there's cottages and things, mm -hmm. um, I would I wouldn't do more than two hundred feet only because three hundred feet for the purposes of a butters field. under other hearing circumstances is a butters along the perimeter of the property and the road does not interrupt the contiguity of of the contact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you do three hundred feet, you might scoop up 50 different cottages or, or yeah, homes. So, so 200? 200, 200 seems reasonable. fairly reasonable, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And if, if you find that's catching too many people and they're not concerned, then the other option is to put it in the paper and then everybody's notified, mm -hmm. right? right? And it'll probably yeah. Have I'm, the same yeah. monetary. I'm, I'm thinking that for people who are not immediate abutters, send them a letter. It's like a positive notification to make sure they get something that tells them it's happening. Between who are that, not immediate abutters, or who? Yeah, people are. within the 200 feet, but are not immediate. Oh, abutters. gotcha. gotcha. It's like it's like basically you, it, you, there's the owner of the dog mm -hmm. who are going to get served, mm -hmm. and then there are the immediate neighbors who are like, okay, they really ought to be notified and we got to make sure they're notified and then there are people the next circle out who are within okay. 200 feet to who and, and the further out you go the less urgent it is that we get the notification to them because so the further you get away the less contact you're likely to have with the dog so my thought is anyone who's not an immediate abutter we just send them a letter and then anyone beyond that the website and yeah but, yeah, but you are sending the immediate account. abutters a letter what's that you are sending the immediate abutters but we a letter. have the, but we but we the procedure gives us the option to send a constable to the immediate abutters whereas people who aren't the immediate abutters oh, we just send them a letter okay so what what I had was you were going to do immediate abutters with first class confirmation and that you were going to notify the owners with a constable okay I, I thought we talked about having the option of ha sending the constable to the immediate abutters well you can always make it more formal yeah, yeah. You and can't then make it less formal yeah it's like I, that that's what I envision is definitely a constable for the uh, owners um, Certified, I'm going to say certified, it could be return receipt, whatever the right term is, but a, a confirmed mail delivery to the abutters and with the option to a constable if we think that that, in, if it, that serves it's the town's interest. Okay. And then people beyond immediate abutters, we're just going to send a letter to. And then anyone beyond that, it's the website and if someone picks that up and posts that to Facebook, that's great. The more people that hear about it, the more. Well, I think that it, if we have the option and somebody's willing to do it, we should notify anybody. Like every time I get some kind of, got a call from an email from Lindsay at 111 a couple days ago that National Grid planned on working and they were going to close the road between four and six, Town Farm Road, I think mm -hmm. it was. 
Mm -hmm. As soon as I found out, I posted it. We found this out. This is what we're doing. And I sent it to the two popular town Facebook Facebook people who are nice enough to post it. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it went as an urgent alert, and then I put it out out there on Facebook. Yep. Uh, I saw it on Facebook, and so that was nice to see that getting out there. Yeah, it was great that Lindsay let us know. But she, Mm -hmm. you know, she can't let us know if they don't tell us. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, National Grid, if they don't tell us, we don't know. Right. So. Okay. So I think that hashes out notifications. Is that, yeah. What other yeah, things? so we or have... Least, I know what I and, want. And we've got the 48-hour posting, so how soon do you want... You're never going to get the letters out in 48 hours. And you, when you send the notice, you have to give them the hearing date and yes. time. And so, I would then I would say three, if we, your three day window isn't going to work. If we well, the three if if we do it within three days, then that means that we're going to have to use the constable to notify the abutters. And my thought is, it's like if there's if that's the only way it works, that's the only way it works. So if it, we but, know, but we have the discretion to we have the discretion to schedule it such that the letters can get out there. So once we get the complaint. Mm-hmm then it would be imperative that the selectmen pick a date and yep. schedule the hearing. Yep. And then we'll have it for the notifications right. to send out. Yeah, that makes sense. That we look at it, it's like we have to have the hearing, so we pick a date okay. and we, we sort of look at something and say, what's the, what, makes, what makes sense for our calendar and allows us to notify the- um, And that will work independently citizen. of, what kind of crazy, what kind of crazy laptop is this? Okay. Um, so th- receive the notice, pick a hearing date, would be the second step. Um, ask ACO to investigate. Do you want a written report? Um, I would ask. I would say written or verbal delivered to the, ch- <coughs> to the chair. <coughs> <coughs> would be my recommendation. Mm-hmm. Just because the report, like you said, is not going to be official until we have the hearing. So, well, so I, I don't, I, yeah. I don't want to give you a homework assignment. No, but that's on a short notice. She's relevant until the hearing is held anyway. Yeah. And even that, that's just an opinion. Yeah. Yeah, but once you have the investigation, then we'll have the evidence at the hearing. Right. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, but not before. Well, I. So. Well. So what we pick the hearing date, ask the ACO, so those things happen simultaneously, and then once we have the hearing date, we send the notification that the hearing is going to occur on such and such date at such and such time in this location mm-hmm. with the details, um, which I, I gave you a sample of a notice. A sample of a notice? I a sample of hearing. I don't have a sample. Okay, hold on. All right, hold on one moment, please. Dog hearing protocol. Open the hearing. Nope, that's not it. I'm going to shoot it to you real quick. I can't print from here to that, so, or maybe I can, actually. Let me, see, let me give it a wild and crazy shot. <coughs> I can try and print it. No, that'll work. Yes, I know the right way to do this. I thought I sent it to the board, but. Can you print from your laptop? I just looked at it. No, I can't. All right, so you're going to have to go run in your office and print it if you would be so kind. Basically, it's on Town Lennox's Brookfield Board of Selectmen. Notice of public hearing, nuisance dog complaint, which would be nuisance slash dangerous dog. 
So we would change it depending on what the letter, what it, what it's for. It yeah, just, but I thought you said we can't prejudge it. Though. No, 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 no. You, if you get a, I want a dangerous dog hearing, you can ah. absolutely oh, say gotcha. it, yeah, yeah, that yeah, we're yeah. having okay. a dangerous dog hearing. Yeah. Um, so it says pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 4157, a public hearing will be held at on such a date in the banquet hall to consider action to be taken regarding a whatever kind of hearing it is, nuisance dog or dangerous dog. And then um, if you want to, we can add the description of the dog or the dog that resides at. Dog that resides at. Mm -hmm. Okay. That gives people that um, may not have called me or reported incidents a chance to realize and figure out their incident first too. They mm -hmm. recognize that that's the dog that they have fallen with. And that helps. Yeah, I, I think that makes sense for people to understand. Is this something, oh yeah, I, I want to I have something to say about this, or I want to hear what goes on. Right. Yeah. It may have been a smaller incident, but it, it may add up after you know, and you may, they might just not call. A lot of people will call together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Or, or you may actually need to do both, because the, the only concern I have with saying the dog residing at is that um, if they have multiple dogs, I mean, somebody said the dog residing at 10 Common Street, is it my 20 pound dog or is it my 70 pound dog? Same. If they're a problem in the neighborhood, the people will know which one it is. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. 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 I think also the description of the dog should distinguish. Um, yes and no. I would agree that people would be able to tell what kind of dog it was from a description. Mm -hmm. That there's a lot of breed prejudice and that cannot impact yeah. or influence the hearing in yeah, any way, shape, yeah, or and form. That's, that's the, and that's you the might reason. get more people to come out because a pit bull was roaming the neighborhood, then you are because a cocker spaniel ate a baby's face. Right. Yeah, even though it, even though the cocker spaniel the ate I love the baby's face. Yeah. She's not wrong. Yeah, she's, right? she's totally so not wrong. For the first year I was animal control, um, this was 1995, a cocker spaniel literally ate a baby, a two-year-old, ripped a two-year-old's face off. It got no play at all. Yeah, there was, there but was a pit bull, was wandering the neighborhood wearing its normal little pit bull smile, right? Mm -hmm. they, they smile. Like, they're so cute. Anyway, <laughs> and people freaked out. They yeah. called me. They cried. There's a dangerous dog. What are we gonna do? I drove up to the neighborhood. I looked at the dog. I said, "Hey, you wanna go for a ride?" Mm -hmm. Dog jumped, jumped in the, in the front seat. I read its dog tags and I drove it home. <laughs> said, "Please don't let your dog out. It's scaring everybody because." Yeah. They have a, a misconception of mm -hmm. the breed overall, so I would I would say that we could put the yeah, the, yeah. the, the, the location mm -hmm. of the uh, home, maybe the name of the dog mm -hmm. as right. a descriptor if we have that. Um, but I wouldn't put more than a dog that resides at, and then if people know the dog, they'll come. Yeah. Like you said, if there's three dogs there and one is a jerk, people are gonna be like. I bet it's not for the you know happy go lucky buddy pit bull. It's just lagged over. Right. <laughs> yeah. I bet it's for the other one. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's Good not the golden retriever that eats the tomatoes out of my garden. It could that's be the that. problem. Yeah. Although, although yeah. Well, that's another good example of it. I mean, there was a period of time where like labs bit more people than everybody else. They're in else, the top ten dogs for so biting. Cockers and animals are both big biters. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Yep. Of the top ten dogs, I think eight of them are under 30 pounds that mm. bite. And then one's Chihuahua. Yeah. It's a little nervous dog. It's like, I'm gonna kill you, I'm gonna kill you, I'm gonna kill you. Lose an ankle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so our dog that resides at, and then we'll put the yeah. location of home. Okay. Um, and maybe put in a no, we don't need to put anything else. And then you can see from the second page the notice to go to the person. Mm -hmm. Which is what we would have delivered by the constable for the dog owner. Mm -hmm. And the, um, so the abutters would get the notice of public hearing. This is what would be posted on Facebook. This is what would be posted on the websites. Mm -hmm. So it's 
got the right information, but it's not prejudicial. But actually provides actual notice. And then you can also s send the same notice of hearing, nuisance or dangerous dog letter to, um, and you can see I stole it from, I think I stole it from Turner Falls. Because <laughs> <laughs> the return address is Turner Falls to the owner. Um, yeah. Well, you know what? I, I reached out. I got dozens of responses, and 99% of them were exactly the same. So, but this was the best letter, I think. Um, this would go to all of the abutters as well. Mm -hmm. Unless you just want to send hearing notice to the abutters. Mm -hmm. Do you just want to send what? Do you want to send this whole letter to the abutters, or do you want to send the, just the hearing notice to the abutters? Uh, I'd prefer to send the letter. Okay. Because it, it says think, that they'll be to, they'll be um, able to testify under oath. Right, and and I want that specified as the under oath because people will just say some stuff, yep. right? Mm -hmm. Versus yeah. if you at least set the expectation that yes, which oath. means you're going to have to swear them in, right? Which when, which when uh, yeah, which is we'll probably need some internal procedures for that. Yep, that's something I think I included in your in your paperwork. It says, swear in all witnesses, all the yeah. persons intending to testify, please identify yourselves by name. Yeah. So you see down there, this, yep. this procedure has all of that um, process in it. So we covered the notice, we covered the letter, we, we figured out how we're gonna get the people served, and we have a time frame. So no later than two weeks from the notice, Using business days? Within, I would say within 10, ten business, business days. days yeah. It's like, effectively, we might as well, that's why it's always 10 That, that way, if there's like days. a holiday, then it doesn't count. Yeah. Hearing within. Yeah, because that throws off our, that throws off our scheduling time. Yeah. Within 10 business days. I notice time. Yeah. I notice okay. window. All right. And you want to give the abutters as much notice as possible once we have the hearing date? Yes. Yeah, I, I think I think once once the board schedules the hearing, then I think notices can go out to everyone. Well, if, even if other things are still in yeah. process. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so we we can, even if we're not ready things, to hold the hearing yeah, itself. Yeah. Things can happen simultaneously. But yeah, we, we want the notice out as early as possible, just to give people as much time as possible okay. to get themselves ready and, and we'll make themselves available. All right, so do you want to make a motion to adopt the procedure as we've discussed, which would receive the notice, hearing within 10 business days, choose a hearing date, and ask the ACO to investigate notification of owners um, will be by constable as soon as the hearing date is with is not as soon as, but once the hearing date is scheduled. Mm -hmm. So moved. Okay. All right. And then if you look at the dog hearing, oh, you've got a vote on this one. Second. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I, I wasn't sure if you were done, so. Okay. All right. Any further questions? All right. Then all in favor of adopting this policy and procedure say aye. 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 So you're going to go with the procedure that I presented? Yes. Yes. Okay. Got to start somewhere. All right. And this is just a step by step. You can keep this with you during the hearing. It just. Yep. Tick tick yep. tick 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 yeah. tick. Oh. I I noticed it was structured that way. Thank you. 
Yeah, that's... We are amateurs trying to do a professional job. And, like, and, and with, and with someone's animal, it has to be done right. There's so just... these can be extremely emotional mm -hmm. and volatile. So a very um, firm control over the meeting and a willingness mm -hmm. to get up and stop the meeting until calm is regained. And, and you may not have that, but it, mm -hmm. I've seen it happen. Yes. I've, I've seen people yeah. the, uh, do some very emotional things during these hearings. All comments directed through the, uh, the board or yes. through the chair. You it's will hear the witnesses. The witnesses will speak directly to you. There will be no speaking to anybody or cross speaking. Mm -hmm. um, no, no outbursts of any kind. Um, and, and that's just so that you can keep control over it. So. Yes, I. I do that with my kids. <laughs> it's like I say, it's like, no, no, don't, don't, don't. He's talking, let him finish, then you can tell me what you think happened. Usually works. All right. <laughs> I don't have anything else with regard to the dangerous dog hearing and policy. So. All right, then, uh, given that this is a scheduling matter, I think we should discuss scheduling a dangerous animal hearing. Okay. Yeah, you have a request for a dangerous yes. animal hearing. Yes, do, uh, uh, do we have, did we get any indication of Brad's availability? I think he's available next week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and that's it, I think is what yeah, he said. I think he said that. I think Wednesday, Thursday, comes back Tuesday night, he's here Wednesday, Thursday, and he's leaving again on Friday. Yeah, so it would... If we want all three of us to be here, it's gonna to have to be Wednesday or Thursday it, next it week. It can't be next week. It's too soon? Oh, that we, oh, now that we have the policy? All right, then. Well, why, why can't it be next week? Two weeks ago. Well, well, no, we, no, within no, we two have, weeks. We have two, we have two weeks have, to get it. You said within 10 business days. Yes. To hold your hearing. So, yeah, I, I guess you can do it that quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, can. Yeah, well, yeah, we've, we've needed we've some time to, right. uh, to, to put this policy in place. So I'm slightly inclined yeah. to, <coughs> make, make, to, so, to make sure so we do it on the earliest. The reason I'm saying next week is going to be a challenge yes. because nobody's here tomorrow and you want the abutters notified. Oh, that's right. And so we've so got to get an abutters list and we've got to get, and we've got to get a constable ready and yeah. we've got to get the mailings ready so even if we could do it all on Monday mm -hmm. and we got it in the mail yeah that Monday night yeah. they won't get it in time for the meeting yeah. Thursday's not a, effectively Thursday's not a week away Thursday's three days from when we can get stuff out yes so and yeah. we have yeah, to, and so posting is an issue so it's a little too tight because today's yep. Thursday um, you could do it I would During rather. the August third meeting, I'm everybody's supposed to be here for that one. Brad won't be here. The schedule change. He's not. Well, I think Brad said he's going away I'm next assuming, Friday and I'm gone. I'm assuming it's not my it. dog, so we'll have at least two people. Yes, yeah. you don't need to have a full board. You just need to have no, a board. No, we, we don't. And so it's like, if we can't do it next week, then Brad won't be around. And so we, it's the week of July 31st, I believe. Yeah, the week of Monday, July 31st. Because after right, that August week, 3rd. I go away. Right, so August. So, um, so we, pick, if you don't want to do it on the 3rd, pick a different day. I'm inclined to do it on a different day just because this is, I don't have a good feeling for how long this is going to last. Mm -hmm. And I don't want, it's like, and either we're trying to jam the select board meeting in to get the dog, the dangerous animal hearing on time, or the select board meeting is going to get pushed out after however long this dangerous animal hearing is going to go. So just given the uncertainty over this and just we're all new to this. So you, I'm, I, I, your my preference is my preference is for Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, and so given that, what days work for you, Beth, or how how does that fit for you? So Mondays <coughs> and Wednesdays are hard for me to get back in time because they are the days that I go into Connecticut to work. Okay. So unless we're going to hold it at mm -hmm. 7 p.m., if we if we're going to do it, uh, if we set a time that's a little later than an average selectman's meeting, like mm -hmm. like 7 yes. p.m., 
I can do 7 p.m. any day of the week. I can do as early as 6.15 on Tuesday. Okay. So. Um, I'm, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm think given this, if we can get the notices out on Monday, scheduling the hearing for Tuesday, August 1st would be a reasonable time frame. It gives us effectively six business days from when the office, the select board office can start executing on this. Kelly, how does, how, what's your opinion on the logistics there? Is that something that we can, as a town, can do? Or do, or do if you have concerns? You, if you pick August 1st for the date, we can get the notifications out probably by Tuesday afternoon at the latest. So okay. that would, should give us plenty of time. Okay, mm -hmm. let's do that. Okay. All right. And then I'm inclined to schedule the, uh, the hearing for 6 o'clock. Is this room available on that day? Or, I'm, or are we going to have to kick someone out? <laughs> or hold it down at the police station. We or at the, uh, yeah, the police station might not be a bad place to do I, it anyway. I, I, actually, actually, let's schedule it at the police station meeting room. I would I'm actually not prefer that. I'm going to allow you off they're following me to my car. I mm -hmm. don't That's see anything. That's that's well, then we'll, let's make it easy. The police station? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, yeah, let's, let's schedule it for the uh, conference room at the police station. At the police station, oh, and yeah. what time? 6 o'clock. Or six that, fifteen. Let's that, make it six fifteen. Yeah, I, was, I, 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 yeah, I'm going. Wait, no, <laughs> six fifteen for that. Because I sometimes have calls that last until right until yes, six fifteen mm -hmm. during the, the police station, <laughs> or later, like today. <laughs> okay. All right. Even working from home, it doesn't insulate me from it making me late. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. All right, and so consistent. So, in. Con in, uh, in concurrence with the policy, um, uh, Cassie, Cassie, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then uh, you'll you'll need you'll you'll need to finish your investigation. I, I expect you already have some stuff in your head, but and we will expect um, that that um, Kelly. Is that something that should be provided to us before the hearing, or should it be at the hearing? I, I know you're concerned about some prejudicial things, you know, and so I don't want to. My screw gut it. tells me it should be at the hearing, oh, but prejudicial. but you know because again you don't want to have prejudicial information. You might get information from the neighbors that that might be contrary to what um, the animal control officer is hearing from people who have been disturbed. Mm -hmm. So um, you never know which direction these things are going to go in. So I would I would suggest that that be presented at the hearing. Okay, I, that makes sense to me. All right, so um, I would ask a, uh, for a, uh, a written report and a, uh, any, uh, be ready to talk to that uh, under oath. And then it's, I don't know if we will ask you for a recommendation, but I can't say we won't. So it's like, and I don't, and is, I don't know, I don't know about getting an abutters list either because I don't know. Um, well, first of all, you're going to need to provide us with the name and address of the owners of the dog. So. The one that we're out of hearing for? Yes. yes. Oh, you want to do that right now? No. Oh, I'm just okay. saying that's something we're going to need before, before we just send us an email so okay. that we have it. And, yeah. and, and that way and we we'll can fill the in the blanks assessment. on the letter. Because yeah, I, I think the office can figure out who the abutters are and... Right, we would get that from we would get that from the assessor's office. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we have to schedule a constable, which we have to make sure that we have a constable available to do the service. Well, we can also use a police officer. We can use a constable or a police. Officer. Yes, that's right, because the policy allows for yep. either or. So. And that dates of the complaints would be important as well because it's part of the letter to go out to the. Okay. Oh, we received complaints on um, blah, 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 and what the complaint was. The yes. dog was doing A, B, and C. Yes. So we need some detail. Yeah. Kelly? Yes. Would it be proper for you, for you to review the report to make sure that it is um, factual and appropriate for the setting without sharing the details of it with us? Or is that a bad idea? I can certainly do that. I'm not the hearing officer. I have no say in the judgment. I would be sitting be an here administrative listening. Review. And yeah. it would be an administrative no, review to see if there's, this This is too vague. There are too many personal pronouns. I need to know names of who's doing what, mm -hmm. where, and when. So yeah. that that's actually 
appropriate. Yeah, especially since the, I, this is probably the first time you've been asked to do this. So let's, I know we're gonna be learning on this, but let's get our first try as good as possible. Yeah. Because I know, I know it's, it's too easy to let personal done, stuff. Yeah, right? hopefully, we don't yeah, hopefully, do it hopefully we do all this and we never have to use it again. Oh, there you go. Wow. Oh, <laughs> criminally trigger. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, so I think that I think that's so that so the policy is settled and we have the hearing scheduled for Joe, uh, August first, excuse me, at six fifteen police station conference room. All right, and then uh, Karen and Kelly, you will take care of um, getting the notices out and posted for that. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. And let's see, all right, so um, that, uh, do we have anything else on dangerous animal that we, anyone thinks we need to cover on this topic? Good, I want it to be done. <laughs> all right. I just have, I have one stupid question, not directly related to this. What, is, what are the training requirements in Massachusetts for ACA position? Is it the, the, the core, like one and two, or just one for now? It's um, at least core one and then an extra 16 credits in your first year, and then you have to maintain 16 credits a year via, like I do a lot of Zoom classes, and mm -hmm. I did, I signed up for core two. I tried to do the um, academy, but they don't give you the dates. They think it'll be easier. Oh, Jesus. Well, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, not surprising, it's a government. No, it's, it's a, a government. government no, program. I totally, I totally get so it. So that one I couldn't do, but the core I signed up for, I did core one, and then I did a bunch of, um, I did blood sports, which I'm not sure that's going to be necessary around here for the school. Well, class. actually, no. Actually, it, it, rural communities are actually not, it's not yeah. uncommon. But, but blood sports mean like dog fighting or cock fighting? Dog yep. or cock fighting, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I understood what that reference. I was just curious, and I apologize. Yeah, no, 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 no. I, yeah, and the state goes, hey, congratulations, your animal control officer completed. Da, 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 da. And I'm like, just wait. Because <laughs> I don't have to chase our animal control officer and say, are you going to do this? Please and thank you. I think you're fiddling because I have a list that I forgot to submit to her. Nice. That's okay. No, they've notified me when you take no, the class. No, I've taken a lot. I've taken a lot. They've um, notified. They said, well, they thank said, you they for being diligent. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. yeah. I actually enjoy learning about the animals. Alrighty then, what's next? I believe we are done with the animal control officer method, so please uh, feel you. free to uh, leave if you don't want to stick around for the rest of the fun. Speaking of neglected animals, I'm sure my horses would tell you they're pretty neglected. Oh, so <laughs> hard. Life is so hard. Yeah, horses Maybe are friends. <laughs> hey. All right, next item, review highway monthly reports for February, March, and April. All right, and let's see. Um, I don't think it's there yet. No, although at least I started to do the math on February, so mm -hmm. there are some areas where like the names are omitted type of a thing, so it's kind of hard to figure out how many hours you're talking about, but I did the math on a couple of the weeks in February and at least averages between like 32 and 38 hours per week per person. Okay. So. I think one of the challenges is just the understanding that the estimate the estimated time was the estimated time per person, and but it does, and I haven't. I think it would be nice if they didn't make us do the math. So yeah, I would. I would ask him to do to, total to, hours, to do and that's net. like because if there are two people, I'm really not concerned whether one person spent six hours on it, one person spent two hours on it, or both of them spent four hours on it. I just want to know that there were eight man hours spent. On right. that particular task. Right. So, with prior to this, I believe there were like 550 available work hours for the department, not including the administrative assistant or for road work. Mm -hmm. right. I think. I don't quote me on the number, but it's something like that. So, if this is close to that. Well, it's not. I mean, well, actually, or, or you're saying per month? Yeah. Yeah. No. So, no. No. So, so in a given, so in a given week, if you've got, it looks like I, it looks like we had four people that are roughly full time, right? So that would be 160 hours a week. Maybe. Yeah. So, so if you multiply it by 4.3, which is what you do if you're, if you're doing a month, right? Because okay. there's always that little part of the week, and then a little part of the week. Yeah. There's 600.
688 man hours for four full time people. For a month. For a month. Okay. And 40 hours a week. And that's not including administration. So this is a different category. So if, if her hours are included in here, that can be isolated yeah. as a different purpose. Yeah, right now mm -hmm. hers aren't in there at all. Yeah. So. Her name's not down there. I think we had mentioned before that, you know, we know what hours Lindsay works and what she's doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're, yeah, looking, I'm, we're looking for man hours on the street. Yeah, applied yeah. to the applied to the roads. Yeah. Kind of an idea. So you have a base of how many hours are available in the work team to do the work. So if what right. they're doing adds but, up super and mm -hmm. if it doesn't yeah. and, where and are the, those missing and, hours? And the challenge is is that these are are in in terms of timeline they get worse in terms of so February was okay with the first couple weeks of the month and then the back half of the month there's a lot of holes and gaps where you've got to assume a lot. Mm -hmm. March was looks pretty complete and I suspect if we go through doing the multiple math it it's pretty decently accommodated. So I asked Ryan but then about April is like like the who's on first and the <coughs> mm -hmm. so I, I asked he ran out Ryan, steam. I said if you have four people's names there and you have an estimated time six hours, is that a cumulative? And he said no, that's per person. Right, that's what I figured. That's, so that's how that's, this is that's when the mat, that's yeah. when the mat, math started to make sense because at first it didn't look like it made sense and then when I started doing yeah. it as multiples, then it yeah. started to actually And then you look up. at it and some weeks some of these people are working more hours. Yeah, it's I, confusing. Well, I, I think that's why, I think when he says estimated time, he's saying, uh, I might read that as average time per person with someone, with some people working more hours, some people working less hours on the project. But we'll need to ask Ryan for that. But my yeah. thought is that he's, he's out this week, but we can um, thank Ryan for this and ask him to uh, make a couple changes to future reports. Um, specifically that the, um, the hours should be the total number of hours worked by uh, all employees, not a per employee number. Because fundamentally, at this at this level, I don't care. Like the, it says right here, like in for April, 20 hours for small mower me. Well, that's Eric, so that's not right. But like street sweeping, Donald and Eric, 20 hours. I'm not concerned if. Donald did 30 and Eric did 10 and it averaged to 20 per person that week. Mm -hmm. I just want to know that the highway spent 40 hour, 40 man hours sweeping the streets. That that's the detail. That's the level of detail I'm looking for right now. Yeah. And so I, I think we should, we should ask Ryan to make that change in future reports to help us understand what's going on. And I would also ask him to uh, put a total at the bottom for every week. And it may just, and part of it, it might be easier to just add another column. It's like, you know, estimated yeah. time per person and then the net, <laughs> net time as like a, another column yeah. and then yeah, just I do the sum on the I, I would say I would like a, an extended, like an ex, a column that has total number of man hours on the project. And if he wants to leave in the average per person, I, like that's, I'm okay with that. I just want to see the number of, uh, the total number of man hours worked on that project so that it's just, a straight sum down, and I can look at the number you came to. Mm -hmm. So on the April so. one, if you look at week two, it looks like Donald and Eric spent their entire week doing nothing but street sweeping, right? Because they had 30 hours each street sweeping? Mm-hmm. It does look like. Is that a two-man job? Or do we have two street sweepers? I don't know. That I mean, sounds. That sounds like. Some sandy roads, but, that know. sounds. That sounds like a question for Ryan when he's mm -hmm. here on the third. And then I would. Um, yeah, and it looks like Ryan worked like six hours. And then I would. Which I, I know he didn't. Yeah. I know he worked more than that. <laughs> and then if he has anything down here that like doesn't really have any hours, 
or he wants to like put in some status update like this project started or like I'm hearing like granite curbing started on Central Street. Well, I'm not sure what that means. But if it's something that where he's just saying it started but if they didn't do any work on it, I'd like non-hour things to be below the total. Where if they're just you're, sort of you're informational have to status. Explain that to him because I'm not really sure what you mean. So. Okay, that's that's fine. It's like that I would uh, that I would like him to uh, that I would like him to separate out the the work items, which have hours work next to them, with general project status information where he's just updating on the status of something, but there is no, but is not intended to capture any hours worked. I want them, I want those two things in separate groups. And if he doesn't, ha and if he doesn't have anything that's a status update, well then that's fine. Then there's only one group. Because I can't tell, he says granite curbing started on Main Street. It's like, no, if, he's on vacation, he's going to work. Yeah, he won't so, get it in a rest. So yeah. But Kelly, like here in week two, granite curbing started on Central Street. So what I'm trying to understand is, is he just telling me that it started, but he doesn't have any hours to report on it? I have or, no idea. I've never understood. No, no, no. I, I, no I'm, 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 I'm saying this to highlight my question to you, not because I think you know the answer. Oh. But my confusion is when he says curbing started on Central Street, I'm trying to figure out, is he saying that the project started, but he, there's no hours on it? Or is he saying that they worked so many hours on it and it just happened to start this week? In which case I would say that it should just be granite curving on Central Street. And, like, and so that's why I think there may be some just informational things in here to which an hour count is not appropriate. And anything to which an hour count is not appropriate should be in the, in the uh, corresponding week, but should be separate from the hours worked. Because okay. that, that, to my mind, is going to make it easier for me to understand what he's telling us he's doing. That Does that make sense. sense to you, Beth? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Do we, need a, uh, do we need a motion to uh, make that direction to Ryan? Or should we just ask? I'll make a motion that we, that, that, that we ask Ryan for the clarification as specified to his future reports. Mm -hmm. That we ask well, him to clarify these reports or that we ask him to... Um, in, that, in, that we ask him that future reports um, include the information we ask for. So I, my motion currently is about the improve, enhancing the quality of future reports in accordance with the Good. details that you just discussed. I think that's the appropriate ask. Okay, thank you. I'll okay. second that. All right. Uh, any more discussion? All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Said he was going to get the last two for us in time to discuss in two weeks. So. Why is 77 in process? Are you setting a new record for minutes? I was happy to get the 717 minutes since I wasn't there. I was going to ask for synapses, but then I got the minutes. <laughs> so, the, so the 430, I'm probably going to Monday take more time and find something. Because I was literally like rushing through it to get something to you by 3 so you have time to look at it. So if you didn't look at it, we'll just wait. I'll wait until Monday. And for, for which one? 430? 430, yeah. I looked at 430, 19. Oh. I, ma I managed to do that. All right, so the minutes. Where's my minutes folder? I don't have them. So which minutes are we? Uh, 6, 29, 23, both open and executive session. OK. 7, 6, 23. Mm -hmm. 7, 17, 23, both open and executive session, which was sent to you. OK. Um, and 4, 30, 19, if you had time to read them. If you didn't, then not both. Um, I was able to read 4.30.19. Beth, were you, or should we push that out the next time? Um, just looking for it to make sure. I thought, I think I scanned it, but I don't know that I had read it. Read it. Let me just look at it. If you give me about a minute and a half to make sure, sure I, I'm remembering the right set of minutes, then we can vote it. Now it's getting a little warm in here. We just got one more item.
I'm good. We can do it the seven, the four thirty minutes. Okay. All right. So um, I make a motion that we approve uh, the six twenty nine twenty three minutes two sets, um, the four thirty nineteen minutes, and the seven six twenty three minutes, uh, as well as the seven seventeen twenty three that we previously received electronically. Yes, and both sets, the open. Oh, yeah, yeah, the open and the executive session. All right, I will second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, and then uh, last item on the agenda, uh, release the executive session minutes uh, from 629-23. Is it just for that date? Uh, is it just for that date, or is that all the executive session meeting, all the so minutes regarding that matter? So I need to double check with town council to make sure that there is nothing in those that can't be released. I know this can be, for sure. Okay, okay, and so. And it's important for people to know because that's the final decision. Okay, that's. Right, yeah. so, um, so that, that's important for people to be aware of. And we didn't have time once I had said to Karen, we need to start releasing the executive session minutes because the case is over, we mm -hmm. can do that over time, go through them and go, okay, well, we're releasing these, but we're redacting this because here's a minor that is in it, or something like that, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. There are reasons to redact them and release sections, but I haven't seen all of the minutes for um, the uh, lawsuit, okay. so I, I didn't want to release anything without having reviewed it. That, that sounds prudent, it's, I, I, and I, I agree, the, uh, the, the decision at the end is the, um, the most relevant one at the moment. Okay. All right, so I make a motion to um, release the executive session minutes from 629-23. Yeah. All right, I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, that closes our agenda. Uh, we go to uh, get prepared for the hate phone calls. Okay. Yes. That was a warning to me, wasn't it? No. No, you're going to hear it too? No, they're going to take a look at the first line in these minutes and I think they'll start with me. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, they're, the town meeting is loud and clear. Yes. Oh, I agree. And you honor Absolutely. what the residents said to you. Yep. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So. All right. Um, we have two items of correspondence on the agenda. One, Charter is raising its prices because they never lower their prices. They only raise them. All right. So you don't expect me to read all this. Just announce that they. No. All right. Thank you. All right. So. A copy and, is available. A copy is available if anyone cares. Like yep. And uh, Charter did uh, does specify that um, uh, the, their subscribers are being notified via bill insert of the increases in yeah, price. So all right. Good. All right. The other correspondence we have is a uh, letter from uh, a resident from the uh, from the Jays, and uh, they uh, are commending our emergency services. They are let's see. Both the uh, they specifically uh, point out the uh, the fire department under Chief Martell. Um, their response was very comprehensive, thorough, and reassuring. Uh, let's see. And uh, for the Brookfield Emergency Mer the Brookfield Emergency Medical Squad under Chief Lafleur um, during uh, in medical emergencies at their home, uh, caring attention, professional treatment, and calm mannerism coupled with immediate action have comfort and encourage. And so it's a big thank you to all of our emergency services people. Um, I know that uh, the the fire department was at the house across my street due to carbon monoxide detectors going off yesterday. And so it was nice to see them out and helping the neighbors. All right. So, and thank you to uh, Mr. and Mrs. J for uh, letting us know that they uh, that we are that we have people doing such a great job. It's like you think it happens, but when someone takes the time to write a letter, you know that they're really feeling it strongly. Yeah. And I'm at the end of my list. Can you get us out of here? Make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> I will second it. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned at 741. Can I call the other?